Hey, welcome to this video on key logging. This is part two of a video where we are going to take a simple key logger that is now capturing my keystrokes and save the items to a text file. So as you can see from the uh, demonstration here on the window, that if I type something into Notepad, that the uh, message also appears in the key logger screen. So this is part two now of an application that uh, is demonstrating what a malware application can do to you and how do you detect it and remove it from your computer. So this comes with a warning. Malware obviously can get you into trouble. If you're monitoring other people, whether you're spying by doing surreptitious recordings or keystrokes or stealing files, you are liable to the laws of surveillance. And so don't use this on your friends or on anybody. This is just for demonstration on how the application works. Okay, so let's return to the code now, and we are going to implement part two, which is listed here that says store the keystrokes to a text file. All right, so the first thing we have to do is to open up a text file and start writing to it. So right at the beginning, after the uh, first line of our main function is where I'm going to create a text file. So let's create a variable called file path. Now I want to assign that file path to a specific folder that will probably be on your computer. Now we could hard code this in with a string, but I'm going to use some environment variables to be able to save this into the My Documents folder. So I'm going to type in the word environment again, and this time type in special. So we have special folder. And then what do we have for options after special folder? I'm looking for something called My Documents. And sure enough, I type in My, I could use my music, my videos, I could use any folder I want, but my document seems to work well. So this is the file path of my documents folder. So if there's some reason why my documents doesn't exist, we'll try to create that for them. So I'm going to use the statement to say, if not, directory exists. As you can see, I'm typing here and I got the directory that doesn't seem to be recognized. So I need to go and do an import. So let's go to special and use system IO. So now system IO should show up here. It looks like line three is where mine appears. So if that folder doesn't exist, we're going to create the folder. Now I can't imagine that this code will ever actually uh, execute. I think everybody has a My Documents folder on their computer, but this is just to avoid problems. The next part is I'm going to create the actual file name. So we'll call it path, it's a string, and we are going to assign it to the file path, which is the directory name, plus the actual name of the file that we're going to create. So I'm going to use the at symbol to uh, prefix the string. That allows me to use backslashes in here as literals. Now what kind of file name could we use? We could call this thing file of logged keys. We could do that, .txt. That would work. I'm just gonna make it simple and I'm gonna call it um, keystrokes and txt. Now later we might rename that to something more obscure, but Right now, keystrokes txt will work fine. So now we'll check to see if the file doesn't exist yet. If it doesn't exist, then we'll create it. So we're going to use the streamwriter uh, object here, and this will help us create a new file. And so we'll tell it to use the path that we created in the line just before this. So this should get us our file, it should create. Now let's go down into our key logger loop and see if we can write to that file. So I'm going to take these comments and cut them out and put them inside of our loop here just to make sure that they fit where they belong. And I'm going to move the uh, print statement up higher. There we go. All right, so now it's time to capture all those letters and save them into the file. So let's go see where we could put that. I'm looking in my for loop, or my while loop, I should say, and I want to put them inside of here. So if the if the letter has been pressed, then let's go ahead and do the operations where it says store the keystrokes into a text file. So I'm going to cut that line out and put it right after the console write line. So we uh, write it to the console and now we're going to store it to a text file. So I'm going to use Streamwriter. I'm going to say using Streamwriter SW. And I want to open the file to append the text. So appending means it won't overwrite it and we'll use the path word. So now I can use the SW object, SW, and I'm looking for the command called write. And I'm going to write in the letter I. So it should write the number for each letter. Well, I don't want the number. I'm going to cast that as a character. 
So you can see that this is pretty busy uh, file I.O. activity. Every time we type a letter, we do the open file, and we write a letter to it and close the text file. So that's probably not the most efficient way to do text file writing, but it'll work for now. We can go and do some optimizations after we get it running. Let's see how it works. Let's press the Start button. Okay, I got the app running. If I type some letters, it looks like they're coming out here. Now let's go and open up Notepad. So I'm going to type in Notepad here from my command run. And let's type in some more stuff. Hello, this is from Notepad. It looks like it's capturing the keystrokes. Now let's go check to see where our files are. So I'm going to click the Start menu and let's go to Documents. So this is Windows 7. I know it looks a little bit out of date, but it still runs. Okay, so Keystrokes TXT is here. Let's open that. And sure enough, we have the text logging going on in the file. So we've got it printed out to the screen and printed out to the text file. So uh, not bad. This is working like we expect it to. In the next uh, step, we're going to maybe hide this so it doesn't uh, actually show up. And then uh, finally be able to send this text file to an external source. So that way you can actually spy on somebody. So remember, don't do this on your friends, don't do it on your enemies, don't do it except for your own computer. This is spyware. Obviously, you can get in trouble for tapping into other people's information. So take that as a strong warning. But we're going to move on and do some more improvements in the next video.